Hello, everybody. This is Brian Smith here with 321 Gang. Welcome again to our technical podcast, Change the Conversation. And we are pleased to have with us again the indestructible sword, Amit Talvar. How are you doing, Amit? Good. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for having me back. <laughs> yeah, you bet. You bet. So, um, so uh, we want to try and keep these uh, pretty tight, so let's jump right into it. In our last podcast, we were talking about um, some of the basics of a spice, why it's important, who uses it, automotive industry. Um, there's uh, problems uh, and challenges around integration, suppliers and OEMs. Um, that's, I mean, about as a broad brush as, as I could possibly give a spice, uh, considering that it's quite a um, technical technical process. And um, and what we uh, towards the end of it, I recall that we were we were discussing requirements quite a bit, requirements management. It seems to me that requirements management is sort of the, the hub of, of, of the A-SPICE wheel in which everything else sort of revolves. Is, is that a correct assessment? You know, again, broad brush? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it is. I mean, it's just the starting point. You look at any engineering organization and requirements management um, uh, it is probably the most important process that they have to go through because if you get the requirements wrong uh, you know you're just looking at uh, additional costs and trying to fix things down the line so it's really important you take a heavy investment in, in making sure requirements are managed correctly that you've got the requirements right that you're implementing those mm -hmm. and that you're testing against them and and finding exactly. the problems early and things like that yeah because uh, as we mentioned in the last episode um, it's been known for quite a long time that it take it costs at least ten times more, or maybe I've seen a hundred times more to fix something at the end of an engineering uh, process, whether it's software or hardware or some combination of systems engineering, uh, than it does if you catch it early on. So, exactly. so super important, yeah. super important. Yeah. Well, well, here we are in episode two, and we're calling this one. Let me cheat here: establishing traceability and ensuring consistency. That seems to be a, um, a fairly uh, important tenant of of a spice is that, uh, it, is, that it, it is it is a, a common based practice across the different uh, systems and software engineering process groups uh, and it is probably one of the ones where we see organizations struggling with mm -hmm. okay well let's uh, Let's uh, let's we we laid the groundwork in the last episode for why people jump into a spice. So let's talk real briefly about how uh, organizations who want or need to look into using a spice get started. What you know? How do we? Yeah. Do so that? so the driver really is you know organizations you know a spice as we you know going back to the first episode it, it was really standard developed by the OEMs as a way of being able to assess their suppliers. Um, so what we see in the industry is the, the suppliers, they, you know, they want to identify where their gaps are before they actually go through and actually get audited by the OEMs. Uh, and what we're seeing right. is, oh, I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. yeah, what we're seeing is like they'll either have internal assessments done on, you know, by, by their own, you know, uh, assessors that they have in house, or they'll hire some, you know, third party to come in, and they'll identify these gaps and they try to address those gaps. This so there's, a, where, there's an assessment. So there's a formal, like a formal assessment process that goes on. Uh, there are is. experts out in the field who are or a spice assessors. Exactly. Exactly. Similar to like a CMI assessor, um, mm -hmm. they'll come in, they'll do an assessment, identify those gaps, give you a rating. Um, mm -hmm. And I same see. thing, they 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 do this before they actually get audited by the the OEMs. Uh, if I you see. look at a lot of contracts. Uh, before they even able to bid uh, or bid on a, on, a, on a contract, or even if they win a contract, they have to reach a level of uh, a spice rating by you know start of production. Oh, right? interesting. So interesting. Huh. Okay. So they, they so, really, really are pushing it to, to you know understand where their gaps are, and making sure they have a, a strategy to fill them. And and is the is the reason for the OEMs wanting their suppliers to have this is, uh, does that come down to some uh, complexities around integration through the supply chain, it, things like it that? It is. It is exactly what it is now, right? Okay. They want to, the, the OEMs want to ensure that the products that they're getting from the, the suppliers is what is, because at the end of the day, the OEMs are liable, 
right, for what they sure. integrate into the vehicle. Uh -huh. So they yeah, want to yeah, make absolutely. sure that their own processes are being followed. They want to make sure the suppliers are following them also. Absolutely. Hey, and I want to uh, tell you that I appreciate the correct word, uh, use of the word insure versus insure. I can't tell you how many times I, I see the word insure on marketing things all over the place when people are really saying meaning insure. So uh, good stuff. All right. That's my little pet peeve for the day. So, um, so we talked. So, okay. So what do, let's dive down a little bit uh, more and uh, what do organizations who want to adopt a spice typically struggle with so what we see in the marketplace when we come to organizations right uh, establishing traceability that's a, it's the title of our talk today establishing traceability yeah. and ensuring consistency is where we see the most amount of, of, of struggle and that's the gaps that are commonly identified um, in you know organizations can establish traceability in multiple different ways uh, they look at, you know, using naming conventions or tags, right, to be able to manage traceability across their different um, um, uh, engineering artifacts. Mm -hmm. uh, but the gap there is, you know, they can't ensure the consistency because if something changes, it's a manual effort to update um, right. without being able to get notified. And so there has to be a way for it to be kind of automated and for people mm -hmm. on both sides of the change to understand if there is a change, something's actually affected. Uh, I have to go do an impact analysis to understand is there something on the other side that needs to change, right? To make sure that that traceability is consistent. There's, and and that's where we see struggles. And and our continuous engineering platform really uh, is a differentiator for us. Uh, it really it's, assesses that area and actually implements uh, consistency on it very well. And we're actually going to show that today. Okay. That's uh, IBM's continuous engineering platform. Yeah, so so uh, we're gonna give people a little a little view of that. So so good. Um, you talked about we, we keep coming up using the word traceability, and I think the artifacts and elements that we're talking about then are requirements, the tests that validate those requirements, any models that are part of that overall process that uh, are linked to those requirements and tests, and I, I suppose that in, in, in automotive, there must be regulatory and compliance types of things that, that need to be part of that. Would those be the four or the main groups of, of things that we're talking about? Yeah, I mean, if, you, if, there's, if you look at the, the engineering uh, software, the systems engineering process groups, there's, I think, 14, 13 or 14 uh, base practices on establishing uh -huh. bi-directional traceability and ensuring consistency. Um, I only missed 10 then, so that's good. Yeah, so it's, it's from from stakeholder requirements down to right. your system requirements, down to the system architecture, down to software requirements, the software architecture, to the detailed design. And then at every level across on the right side of the V, uh, you're looking at making sure that every side of that has, you know, a, a, a test specification or a test case associated with it. So you're actually validating that you've actually implemented what you've designed. And you're validating and so, that it passed. Yeah. So essentially those are the, that's the why of this. Why is it so important, right? Uh, we talked earlier about making sure you find issues early on in the process. Uh, obviously automobiles carry people and so it, you can consider this a, a life or death situation in, in some cases when you've got hundreds of electronic systems all communicating with each other and, and even you know, seeing externally with cameras and automated braking systems and, um, uh, yeah, airbags, that's the word I'm looking for, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and, and uh, driverless cars and all those things. So I think the why yeah. is, is uh, in this context, pretty apparent. So, so um, yeah, so why don't we then, I think you said you have a slide that you want to show us first yeah. before we jump into uh, a real quick demo of IBM's continuous engineering platform. Yeah, as we, we showed what in our last episode, um, here's you know our the automotive splice process reference model. Um, we are going to focus today on systems engineering, software engineering process groups, but I just want to set some context there. The IBM's continuous engineering platform um, covers multiple areas in this process reference model. Uh, requirements management solution, which is Doris Next Generation, covers the requirements analysis and elicitation areas. 
Um, we have our Rhapsody solution, which uh, covers uh, architectural design. Um, we have our quality manager solution, which covers uh, the software um, and system integration test and verification areas. Um, and then we also have rational team content that can cover some of the project management, risk management, uh, measurement areas, and also along with the configuration management, change request management, problem resolution management. Now there's That's multiple also code control, right? Code. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. The source code. Source code. Um, yeah. Now, the the benefit of our integrated continuous engineering platform is. Uh, the ability that we have all these areas that handle, you know, these these process groups. But if you look at the base practices where we talked about our organization's struggle, it's establishing the bi-directional traceability, but the main one is ensuring consistency. What we see in the market marketplace is, you know, you can do bi-directional traceability, we mentioned many different ways, but ensuring that traceability is consistent is where, where we see it, that being a big gap. And from an assessment standpoint, if you fail that base practice of ensuring consistency, you fail the whole traceability, that you fail that whole base practice. And we'll start right. seeing those organizations get a, get a level zero in that area. Right. Now, it's similar to the CMMI stuff we talked about in the last episode where, um, you know, consistency, you know, adopting a practice and then being consistent in that practice is, is a key element to it. Yeah. And so uh, one of the things with consistency is if there is a change to a requirement, making sure that the test case, there's an impact analysis to understand that does the test case need to be updated? Uh, does a lower level requirement need to be updated? What, what's, what's, a, what's the effect of making that change? And so right. we'll show you in the demonstration how you can actually, you know, see that those changes. So if something does change, you know, what the notification is and how you can set up things. Great. So, um, so yeah, let's jump into it. All right, Amit, uh, what are we looking at here? So here we're looking at uh, our continuous engineering platform. Uh, we got a view showed up where we're seeing a list of our system requirements, mm -hmm. um, right? Uh, each one of those requirements have a unique identifier, lets us be able to identify them. But the important thing here is what, we're, what we talked about is establishing that bi-directional traceability and right. ensuring consistency. So we can look at these. This this requirement itself is actually uh, being described and actually satisfied by a, a state chart, um, a part of our our architectural um, our system architecture, right? So we can wow. take a look at that, um, and we can navigate through that, so we can see that that with the way that we described how we're going to actually implement that requirement is through the state transitions of how our system is actually going to move from one, one, uh, one feature to the next. Hmm. So is that a pretty high-level requirement then? That yeah, has yeah, it's, it's a high-level functional system requirement. Yeah. Got it. Now, now that can be also be, uh, that's just an example, right? You right. could also get down to individual blocks in your, in, your, in your requirement if you wanted to, to say, hey, this is neat, unique block inside the vehicle display is actually going to uh, satisfy how we're going to satisfy the implementation of right. this this requirement. Um, now, now, just to be clear here, the um, a block and a state chart; those are elements of model-based systems engineering, right? And exactly. So, so uh, okay, good. Yeah. So as you as you uh, decompose your system requirements, a part of ASPICE is to make sure that they allocate those requirements into the system architecture. Got it. This is the way that we establish the allocation of the requirements into the system architecture. Okay. But we also look at these places making sure those requirements at each level, uh, whether it be at the software architecture, the software requirements, or system architecture, or system requirements, that we have, you know, uh, established test cases that are going to actually go through and validate those. And sure. so what we're seeing here is, is we have a list of test cases that are actually validating those, that are associated to those requirements as, here's what's actually going to validate it. Mm -hmm. um, and then... And what we see as part of our platform is we have this ability to have rich hover. Uh, so even though these test cases live in some other solution area in another right. application, we have visibility into it. So from a systems engineer perspective, I can actually see, um, you know, the progress of uh, these test cases. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some quick indication right here. We can see that the last time this actually ran, there's a green check mark. 
uh, that we actually had a, a past result. So we know that this this uh, requirement has been validated and verified. Mm -hmm. Cool. Now, what about the question mark next to it? Does that mean that there's something that needs to get validated a second time, or so? So that's that's. So that, that's the part about ensuring consistency. So part of our ah. platform is the ability to understand the bidirectional traceability between these two elements, these two artifacts. We have the requirement and the test case, and making sure that they've been established and that those are those links are valid and consistent. So right now it's it's marked as a question mark. So somebody has to go through once it's been established and mark this as a valid. So we go through and mark that as valid. Now we know that that this link as is consistent. But say somebody goes through and makes a change, right? I'm going to go ahead and make a change to this requirement. As soon as I do that, that ought to go back to a question mark, right? It goes right oh. back to a question mark, right? Mm -hmm. And so we have the ability to set up notifications that way. So the test engineer that's working on that test case can get that notification, he'll see that marked as a suspect, and he'll know mm -hmm. that I have to do some impact analysis to make sure that my, my test case is still valid. Oh, that's cool. So that that I'm actually testing the right thing the requirement. It can be, yep. Yeah, cool. Yeah, m multiple different ways to set up notifications. So dashboards, right. you know, email notifications, um, and yeah, many different ways. Drones? Drones? <laughs> no, I'm only, I'm only kidding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this is also even going down if we look at other ones, right, we can see that visual indication, right, here's a test case that we know last time it ran, it failed, and we have a defect that's now associated with it, right. And now we're able, we can look into that defect and, and get that information. Mm -hmm. right? So from a systems engineer perspective, you can actually track and see where that, where that defect is, knowing that that requirement is yet to be, it's, it's got a, a test case that's supposed to validate it, but it's yet not verified. There is some issue that with implementation. We can actually walk, track and see that progress. Nice. So, so it, lacking a tool like this, all of this has uh, you know often been done manually. Manually, or, and then, yeah. So people do this like having you know a um, uh, some type of Excel spreadsheet. They use naming conventions, things like that. But the thing right. that they can't do is understand if something does change, how do they know there's going to be impact analysis that's exactly, going to be done? Yeah. How's somebody going to get notified? Right? That data is not dynamic. It, it, it is static. Uh, and somebody has to go through and manually update that. And from an assessment an assessor's point of view, uh, that is not ensuring consistency. That makes sense to me. So, well, great. Uh, what and we can actually now look at, you know, here's some capability that we have that can help drive assessments. Mm -hmm. um, we've actually had customers put things together like this. So I'm going to go switch over to uh, a different view here. And let me change the screen size resolution. All right, so what we have here is we have... Um, uh, part of our platform, we have a, a solution called Rational Engineering Lifecycle Manager, and that really does all the indexing of all of the um, the engineering artifacts that we have in our platform, and index the the relationships that have been established between them. So we can actually create compliance views like this. Um, so here, what we're looking at is we've taken our subsystem software requirement specification, we've identified all the requirements inside of it. And now we can look at all the test cases that are associated with those requirements and make sure that every single one of those requirements has a, re, uh, a test case uh, associated to it. But we can oh, also look I at, see. but then we're also looking at, well, here's all the uh, test cases now that they've actually been ran, we mm -hmm. can see the results of them. And we have the ability to do, you know, uh, things like color code these and, and make them graphical and visual to so help drive an assessment and drive your results. So you can see that right. some of these have passed, some of these have failed. And from it an looks like you're missing one. There's uh, no link between the second one, so somebody's going to exactly. notice that easily. You know, that's a, a, a real easy visual aid to uh, let somebody know that there's no test associated with certain requirements. Yep. We have a gap. 
right? You know, there's a gap. And that's cool. one of those process areas where you, where you can where you can identify through through the cycle visualization. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's really cool because we've talked about models for years helping to visualize things that are hard to identify with text, right? Uh, it's just where I think it's pretty well known that people are better visualizers of, of data than um, readers of data. And so this uh, this looks like it could be really helpful. Yeah, and, and again, this stuff's all live. Um, so we can look actually into these test cases, right, if we wanted to go into them. Um, and now this data lives within different tools that are all part of IBM's continuous engineering platform. Is that correct? That is correct. That is correct. We talked earlier, Doris Next Generation is where we have our requirements repository. Uh, we have our quality manager, which handles all of our test artifacts. So that would be test cases, the execution records, results. Okay. And and we then, have RTC that handles all of our implementation with you know, work items management, change management, defect management, source code management. Yeah. All linked together. That's cool. Yeah. Very good. Well, is that is that uh, what we have for today? That, that is our demo for today, and I'm excited to go to the next pot the next podcast. Well, we'll yeah. cover, and I forget what is on the next topic, but I think we're going to go <laughs> dive deeper probably into requirements management. Yeah, I think I think that's the key is to then look at these different areas of, of which you know we've just really broad brush stroke the uh, the top level and figure out uh, how to manage our requirements in the context of ASPICE with which then you'll connect your test cases to and we'll do test cases on the podcast after that and then somehow we'll uh, link it all together so um, okay. I'm really looking forward to it. Awesome. Thanks Brian. All right I mean thanks so much I mean Talvar from IBM's uh, Continuous Engineering Group with part of the IBM Watson team. Really appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you next time. Uh, don't forget, uh, we have links down below to other resources, other information. Don't forget to become a follower of our podcast series, and we look forward to seeing you next time. This is Brian Smith with 321 Gang's technical podcast, Change the Conversation. Take care.